Right, this is a bit of a strange video. It's not been all type uh, mine exploring video, so I might have to put this one on a different channel, I don't know, but um, I was at a bit of a loose end and I thought, wait, I'll do something a bit funny. Well, I think it's funny anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, a little while back I made some whistles, uh, locomotive whistles, for the Exhibition of the North, which of course was that big thing over at Newcastle. Uh, was it about a year ago or something like that? So this is a... Um, a whistle from a J27, which of course originally was a, a P3, uh, dating back to about 1906, um, and of course changed to a J27 in 1926 or thereabouts. Anyway, so we made, uh, at the time, I think it was about maybe 20 or 30 odd of these whistles that were situated on buildings or ever all the way around Newcastle Centre, and this is just one of the uh, original ones, this is the prototype one, which I've got at home. And I thought, well, I've got no way to blow this at home. Uh, so it's a bit of a shame it just sits on the mantelpiece looking nice. And then it occurred to me, wait, I've got a pet blower, which I actually use. This thing, which I use for drying the motorbike off. And I thought, well, I wonder if the pet blower could blow a locomotive whistle. Um, of course, to blow a lo lo locomotive whistle, you need anything between 140 and 250 PSI. Which I doubt that this thing would generate that sort of power until I start calculating a few things. Now if I put this right up to the camera, I don't know if you can see that. It says it's got a wind speed of 50 meters per second. And I thought, 50 meters per second out of that little hole there. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll calculate this back and just see what sort of pressure we're gonna get because obviously with the locomotive, you've got anything between uh, 140 and 250 PSI to, to blow this whistle. And it's going through a half inch hole in there. So I thought, well, if I do a few cal calculations out in my engineer's book, which I'll put up on the screen now, so I don't know whether this works out right or not. I think, I hope it does. It, my compressor at work that powers the whole building um, and drives air tools and everything is giving out about 56 CFM, so a cubic foot per minute. And that powers everything that we need to do. And then I thought, well, I wonder how much a locomotive would uh, generate. So I've tried to calculate it as best as I can. And it seems that 140 PSI through a half inch hole gives you about 408 CFM. Um, 250 PSI, if you've got a much bigger boiler, such as Tornado and this sort of thing, uh, will give you about 728 CFM through a half inch hole. Now this thing here, it's got a much bigger hole in it. Uh, what's that? It's probably about inch and three quarters, something like that diameter. And it works out, if my sums are right, that that would be 1765 CFM if that's blowing at 50 meters per second. So it should have absolutely no bother in blowing this whistle. Of course, it's going to be very loud. So I've got my EMOS at the ready um, because I've made loco plenty of locomotive whistles in the past. So we've got the Black Five whistle, which you can see, uh, see now. And this is a very low pitched whistle because it's uh, only got two knife edges um, over a distance of about three inches around the circumference. Uh, and it's got a very long thin chamber so it makes a very deep note. Uh, this, these are used on black fires and typically run up and down the Scottish um, West Coast and this sort of thing. Move on to the uh, tritone whistles. Now these are a different beastie altogether, quite complicated to make. Uh, there's a lot of different chambers and things in these. Um, but at the end of the day, they've still got three knife edges going around the outside, uh, which gives you three uh, tones and three different sized chambers inside the bell. So uh, here we are testing it inside the booth. Again, this is running off the compressor, running at 56 CFM. This was loud. I mean, the whole industrial estate could hear this, so uh, that's at 110, p 110 psi. So, out of this thing, we've got 1765 CFM. I don't know what that would calculate out into psi going through that hole there, or going through the half inch hole that's in the, in the whistle, but we'll soon find out. So, 
I'm going to go and um, ask the dog to vacate the house, put my earmuffs on, fire it up and we'll give it a go. So this whistle's a little different to the other two because this one, if you can see around there, it has a constant, just dropped something, it has a constant lip all the way around the edge, which you can see, this knife edge here, and you've got your lip plate in there, with the uh, orifice going all the way around the outside. So this one doesn't have uh, separate chambers, it's just one big sort of bell, if you like, it's just an uh, open um, chamber there. So and it's, it wouldn't make it louder, it just gives it a different tone to everything else. Um, we found that the volume is controlled by obviously the amount of air that you put through it and also the uh, width of that um, gap going around there, which currently on that is about 10 thou. So perfect for putting compressed air through. So uh, we'll fire up the machine and see what happens. So we'll turn on the blower. So that's the heat off, that's in, in cold mode, but then I thought with steam of course it's warm in it, so we can put this, well not warm, it's steam. So I'll put this on a high temperature, uh, we should make it thinner, we should make it higher pitch, let's give it a go. Well, <laughs> I set the dog off barking. That does show that it is possible to blow a loco locomotive whistle using a dog blower. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.